just again, just looking to define some terms for people. What, what, what's your definition of financial freedom? My definition of financial freedom is going into the supermarket and not worrying that the purchase you're going to make um, for your daily groceries or weekly gro- shop, you know, you, you're not worrying that that money is going to be in your account. You're not worrying that your mortgage is not going to come out at the end of the month. You're not worrying that your bills cannot be paid, that your car you know, cannot be paid for. You have not got that worry. You have got that peace of mind that you have got positive cash flow in your life. Generally, whatever stage of life you're at, that these things are not a worry for you. You know you are in a solid position. Frankly, sadly, much more than most people at the mm. moment because so many people have been squeezed. Yeah. But that's, to me, what financial freedom represents. It's peace of mind. It's the process towards peace of mind. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, right. So that's, that's, I guess, jump forward the journey a little bit. So we've, you know, so we're maybe now thinking about someone who's maybe in their sort of a bit older, yeah. you know, they've, they've done well at work. They're in a positive cash flow situation. We've talked about the lad who's getting started. And now I think we've talked about the guy who's now probably what, you know, put down, put, put down a deposit for a house, probably looking at getting married. Probably looking at having children. Yeah. So, so yeah, the 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 guy who's maybe got you know mm. a few you know three to six months sort of liquid cash available mm. should done well. Know, any shit hit any fans. Mm. Um, yeah, I guess from that point. So you know you're you're comfortable. Mm. You're kind of financially free to to the ter- to all the definition that you've just used where you you know you're okay. But I actually want to grow my wealth now. I want to improve my situation even more. And yeah. I guess, you know, use maybe the, the definition of financial freedom to the to the extent where, you know, you can maybe if you were to be unemployed for a period, you haven't got to worry or mm. you, you know, you can change jobs and not worry um, and maybe make the bigger purchases and not worry. Well, I think so the next stage for us, we talk in financial planning about trigger points in mm-hmm. life. There are key points in your life where you frankly need to sit back and go, actually, I need to review what I'm doing here. And I would say this next stage is a trigger point for you because things are going to change. And therefore, you need to think about, you know, checking your earnings, um, checking your cash flow and tax positions, uh, because you're, you know, you're probably earning quite well at this point. You've got positive cash flow. Everything's going well. It might be worth you just seeking some tax advice just to check your tax position as appropriate, uh, that you're not paying more tax than, frankly, you need to legally. Um, You know, check your career position. Are you due a promotion? Are things really going well for you? You know, check yourself is the bottom line here. And then also you've got to come on to the next stage, which is, you know, you're going to be thinking about that bigger house for the family. You better check your credit score. You better check, you know, because there's a service from Experian out there. It's free. You can go on Experian, check your credit score, see where you're standing. And then, frankly, the next bit on their service is the paid service. If you think there's any inaccuracies there or problems, address those because that will assist you with the next stage. And then what you're talking about then with your positive cash flow and you're earning good money is saving. And I like to say investing because there's a saying out there that poor people save, rich people invest. And what that means is that generally putting money away is always a good thing. But what you want that money to do is work harder for you. And therefore, what you want to really do is invest in assets. And the biggest asset you're always going to have is yourself. So you should always invest in developing yourself, developing your skill set. That's the first given. The next part is you should look at building up you know, suitable portfolios for yourself that give you that second level reserve that should anything ever happen, that you know, your emergency fund, as we call it, you know, three, six, nine months of cash that you've got sitting around ready to go for you know, those everyday things. You prang the car, you know, someone needs to repair a part of the house, that covers that. You've got your second level reserve that you can then build up tax efficiently. And this is the key point that will assist with any large lumps of capital that you might need to really push forward. And the best way to do that for people of our generation at the moment is ISIS. Um, And when I say ISIS, I don't mean cash ISIS, Um, because while we've talked about the Bank of England raising interest rates and we are seeing some better rates coming out of the banks at the moment, you've got to think with your attitude more long term. Because that is your path to financial freedom. That is your path to peace of mind. You've got to think, yeah, I could buy a cash ISA today, but um, and it might be paying 3 4%. Okay, that's suitable for my attitude to risk. I'm not a risky person. Fine, not a problem. All I'd say to you is you're taking a risk because with inflation at 10%, 16%, 20%, if you're buying food, if food's your main expense, you're losing buying power of your money every year based on the difference between that and inflation. And therefore, you need to think about that. Taking no risk is still taking a risk in this world. That is the world we sadly live in. There is always a risk in everything you do financially. Therefore, you know, saving is good, 
but investing is better. And the only way you're going to keep up with inflation, if you can handle the attitude to risk, is to invest with all respect in the stock market. And that's where obviously I major for my clients. So for people who don't know, what's an ISA? Oh, an individual savings account. It's an account, well, it's a wrapper. We call it a wrapper. Just think about it like a bucket that you can open with most major banks, building societies. There's two types. There's a cash ISA. Well, actually, there's more than two types, but we'll talk about the basics. The cash ISA, and there's also a stocks and shares ISA. We like the stocks and shares ISA. For, I talked about the cash ISA, you know, fixed rate, but you need to think about... So that's about, like your 3 4% yeah, that you get back but you, you need to you, put you need to think about, yes, that's you know what people regard as minimal risk. Um, but, you know, again, we've spoken about risk. We've talked about inflation. We talked about how you would erode your money over the longer period if you leave your money there. If you can... If your attitude to risk is suitable and your other situation in context is suitable, it is a good idea for people of our generation to look at stocks and shares ISA. And it is a good idea to look at building yourself a portfolio there over time with your, you know, extra money that you can then invest for the longer term. And that is a very good way of complementing your future plan. So who, when you put it into the stocks and shares ISA, Hmm. who is investing that money, the bank? Well, you can do it. Uh, There are people who do their own investment portfolios. I would caution most people against that with all due respect, because obviously I've seen some proper horror stories. Um, You know, people don't know the risk of the stocks and shares they're investing in. They think that because they can read a bit of information on Google, they're suddenly becoming investment gurus like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Um, I'm afraid seldom is that ever true. They are normally taking a lot more risk than they actually understand. And therefore, in life and the world that we presently live in, I would say to you, why are you taking that risk? You know, there is always other things in life you could take that risk with, you know, developing yourself, going for that promotion. You know, I would say don't take that risk with your money, personally. Uh, I would say keep it straight down the line. Always keep it regulated, by the way, and this is a very key point. Always look at everywhere you put your money. Look for the FSCS accreditation, uh, financial services, uh, you know, FCA accreditation, because that means your money is held in an account where, frankly, regulation, UK regulation, will do give you some protection. And that is very important. This is your money. This is your future. And therefore, I would say, look, individual savings account, invest that money. And if you can't do it yourself, there are model portfolios often run by banks, building societies, and other outfits that are out there that you can look up on YouTube, Google, etc. Make sure they're FCA regulated again. But you know, you can open an ISA account with them. They have model portfolios, which you can say, what is your attitude to risk? Is it low, medium, or aggressive? And you can tailor it to yourself. And then if you don't like it, you can always pull your money out, or you can transfer it to another ISA. And that is the key part. I think for our generation, if you've got spare money, if you're doing all the right things, and you've got that spare money, that is a good place to build up a good second level reserve for yourself. Because what you need to remember as well is if you have a good job these days, you're already doing some saving. You've got auto enrollment. Is that the sort of thing that you just put like monthly into? Yeah. If that makes sense. So yeah. You know, your ISA, if you, you look you at you your go, oh, I've got this, I've got five hundred pound a month that I'm not really doing anything with. You put it into the the stocks and shares ISA hmm. and from there, the only thing I don't quite understand is you saying transfer it to another. Well, that's if you feel that that ISA is not performing for you. Yeah, so that so there's a specific one for a sp- specific bank, if that yep. makes sense. And then you know each bank might do it slightly different with yep. a different portfolio. Is that is that correct? Yeah. Yes, they yeah. might. They will. There will be different managers for each one of these model portfolios because ah, right. either you can invest and they, in and they decide yeah. on what they invest in, basically. Yes, and they will. They will have little PDF spreadsheets mm-hmm. that you can download, and they will give you maybe some video uh, spiel on a YouTube channel yeah. about you know this is how we see the market at the moment, and therefore this is how we're positioning this portfolio that you can invest in with us. Um, there is a lot more of that going on with financial institutions now, which is great information for you if you're thinking about going down this path. And I'd urge you to do your research, of course, before you ever part with any of your money in any of their directions and make sure they're FCA accredited again. Um, but equally, yeah, you could manage it yourself. Some people do. Some people like to have a bit of a go on the stocks and shares market. But, yeah. you know, you've got to be careful you're not getting into gambling. There are three uh, types of people must be addictive. <laughs> well, this is it. People, people really get into this I, stuff. I might have been guilty of this. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we talk about three different types of people, really, when you know you do my job. You talk about the gamblers. You know, they're the people who will you know, bet on the horse racing like a stock. Everyone likes a stock when it's winning. Mm-hmm. Everyone likes a winner. They won't tell you about their losers, though. Then you've got the speculators who are in the middle. They like a bit of a gamble, but equally they like to think they're semi-serious. With all due respect, okay, fine. 
Then you've got the investors. Those are people who take the longer term view. They buy quality. And buying quality with your money is probably one of the most important things you can ever do with it. Um, we've all seen people go and buy fly-by-night companies. I mean, the biggest one we've seen recently is Tesla. Uh, people thought this was, you know, the next huge thing, and it was for a while. Uh, and I think then, that, that whole, the whole electric car industry, I think, wasn't mm, it? I mean, I think there's still a lot, you know, there's still a lot to be said for it. But at the same time, most of that was forced forward by speculation in the market. A lot of people buying it because, hey, everyone's buying it. The postman's buying it. I mean, there's a general rule. When you hear the postman talking about it, it's probably too late. You know, when you, when you hear the postman talking about a stock, probably a bit too late then. Therefore, you need to think, you know, is this appropriate? Am I taking the right level of risk with my money here? Maybe I should step back. Yeah, Maybe I should yeah. think, think again. Maybe I should seek some advice because I'm building up quite a good nest tech here. Mm. That is the period when you think to yourself, could I afford to lose this money? What difference would this make to my lifestyle if I lost this money? Yeah. And frankly, you want to avoid that situation, obviously.